China's state-owned national broadcaster CCTV has announced that the nation's most advanced aircraft carrier, the Fujian, will be able to conduct deck load strikes once commissioned. This is a type of swarm attack in which a large number of aircraft can be launched simultaneously. Compared to traditional aircraft carriers with ski jump flight decks, the Fujian is equipped with an electromagnetic launch system. The electromagnetic launch system of the Fujian can greatly improve the efficiency of carrier-based aircraft deployment, this technology that forms the foundation of the deck load strikes of the carrier. China's Fujian carrier could carry out swarm attack, delivering shock effect to enemy. The tactic, widely employed by the U.S. Navy during the Vietnam War, is touted to enable the Chinese Navy to gain a first-mover advantage during battle. It had been previously speculated that Fujian would be equipped with the capability, but this is the first time it has been publicly confirmed. China's aircraft carrier technology is marking a historic leap as it enters the critical phase of combat capability development, CCTV explained in its report. The broadcaster added that the domestically produced carrier has been progressing steadily since its first sea trial in May last year. According to the South China Morning Post, the carrier will soon join the People's Liberation Army Navy, bringing the fleet's carrier strength up to three. The Fujian is expected to be operational by the end of 2025, joining China's other carriers, the Liaoning and Shandong Fujian equipped with electromagnetic launch system. The PLA Navy equipped with three aircraft carriers, will greatly enhance its sea escort and defense capabilities. Compared to traditional aircraft carriers with ski jump flight decks, the electromagnetic launch system of the Fujian can greatly improve the efficiency of carrier-based aircraft deployment, it will enable the rapid deployment of multiple aircraft over a short span of time. Launching a swarm attack could overwhelm the enemy, securing the first mover advantage of early detection and preemptive attacks. According military analyst, Conducting such a launch would test all of the ship's systems and crew. However, if the crew could perform up to the standard seen in training, the carrier's full potential could be realized. Sorting as many aircraft as possible in the first wave of attack to destroy, suppress, and deter enemy targets enables the carrier to secure air superiority, establish maritime dominance or support landing operations. In warfare, this allows the carrier to achieve first detection, first strike in the initial attack, inflicting significant damage and securing a strategic advantage. If a mix of aircraft could be launched, the carrier could also be capable of conducting something called alpha strikes. While total number of aircraft vary, such attacks typically involve getting around half of all aircraft onboard airborne in short order. During such operations, the carrier will tend to remain heading into the wind and at general quarters an announcement made aboard a naval warship to signal that all hands must go to battle stations ready to recover aircraft returning from sorties or damaged during battle. According James Holloway, during the Vietnam War alpha strikes were deployed by the US for the very first time for the shock effect or because of the necessity to penetrate very heavy defenses. On an alpha strike, all available aircraft on the carrier were organized into a single strike group, Admiral Holloway said when discussing naval history at a conference in 1991. China's aircraft carrier fleet is undergoing rapid modernization. Its two in-service carriers, the Liaoning and Shandong, currently operate the J-15 a heavier, non-stealthy derivative of the Russian Su-33. But both ships lack catapults and are limited to ski-jump-assisted takeoffs. That will change with the arrival of the Type 003 Fujian, China's first catapult-equipped carrier. Equipped with electromagnetic catapults and arrestor gear, the Fujian will dramatically increase the PLA Navy's ability to project power. The J-35, optimized for catapult launches and carrier landings, is thus a perfect match for this new platform. There is growing speculation that J-35 variants may eventually operate from all three Chinese carriers, as well as future hulls under construction. Such a move would align Chinese naval aviation more closely with the U.S. Navy model, where stealth, networked operations, and integrated AEWNC support define power projection. Alongside the J-35, another carrier-borne aircraft is taking shape, developed by Xi'an Aircraft Company. With its prominent rotating radar dome and twin turboprop layout, the KJ-600 bears a striking resemblance to the U.S. Navy's E-2 Hawkeye. First flown in 2020, the KJ-600 is designed to operate from catapult-equipped carriers like the Fujian, providing early warning, command and control, and airspace management capabilities. It will act as the eyes and ears of the carrier strike group, 
detecting low-flying threats and managing the complex air tasking required in modern maritime operations. The integration of such an aircraft gives China a true force multiplier. With the KJ-600 feeding data into the fleet's broader network and possibly integrating with land-based systems and satellites it represents a critical step in PLA Navy's transformation into a Blue Water Navy. Complementing the KJ-600 is the KJ-3000, a land-based heavy AEWNC aircraft based on the Y-20 cargo platform. First glimpsed in grainy photos in late 2023, the KJ-3000 is now visible in far better detail. With four jet engines, an oversized radar dome, and long endurance, the KJ-3000 belongs to the heavyweight class. Its large radar and possible signal intelligence payloads suggest it will serve not only as a radar picket but as a central node in China's expanding informationized warfare doctrine especially in areas like the East and South China Seas. What is the strategic intent behind this unprecedented wave of disclosures? While the Chinese state has not made any official statement regarding the leaks or the rationale behind them, the shift is conspicuous. Whether through indirect encouragement of state-affiliated accounts or deliberate releases to defense-focused audiences, China is telegraphing a message, it has arrived as a peer competitor in the realm of advanced military aviation. This isn't merely a technological showcase it's psychological warfare. The timing coincides with rising US-China tensions over Taiwan, increased Indo-Pacific naval deployments, and joint exercises by Quad Nations. By showcasing capabilities like the J-35 and KJ-600, Beijing is reminding rivals that any military confrontation in its near seas will be contested in the skies with high-tech aircraft backed by a maturing command and control infrastructure. The appearance of the J-35, along with the KJ-600 and KJ-3000, signals a profound evolution in Chinese air power especially naval aviation. Together, these aircraft provide the PLA Navy with stealth, extended sensor reach, and advanced airborne command and control elements essential to sustaining blue water operations. The message is clear, China is not just building aircraft, it is building an ecosystem of networked, fifth-generation warfare capabilities.